Hello everyone, welcome back to .NET Conf. Uh, we've got a really fun presentation for you here today. We're gonna talk about responsive UI Ooh. with the cross-platform UI framework uh, in Xamarin Forms. Yeah, a little bit more Xamarin Forms. We love our Xamarin Forms, so uh, a lot of a lot of good stuff with it today already. And, Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna keep going. Yeah, and so just in case you're just joining us for the session, we should probably introduce ourselves. Sounds like a good idea. I'm Jason DeBoover. I'm a instructor at Xamarin University. So Xamarin University is where we basically do this all the time. We teach you guys how to be better Xamarin developers, whether it be Xamarin native or Xamarin Forms. Uh, we teach you all about Azure, uh, all about unit testing, basically just making you better developers. And we do that in live classes. That's what I do every day is work with people like you and live classes where we get to interact. So it's a little bit less of the, the me talking at you like I'm doing right now and a little bit more interaction. Uh, we also have a lot of great free content and that's all made possible by the amazing people on the curriculum team at Xamarin University. Which... Oh, well, thank you, yes, and I get to work with those people. So we're behind the scenes, uh, I'm, I'm on the curriculum team and so my team, we, we offer that content. We write the courses uh, that the fabulous trainers get to present. And again, that's all part of ZAMU. It's the place to go for cross-platform, C-sharp.net, mobile learn mo development. If you want to learn mobile, yeah. if you want to learn Azure, we yeah. are the place to go. Yeah, absolutely. So head on over there. There's tons of free content. You want to learn more about stuff like this, like Xamarin Forms, uh, native UI with Xamarin, you know, to Azure, all kinds of fun stuff. And again, tons, a lot of instructor like classes as well. And, and I love talking with you guys. So it's it's so great that we get to actually have have class sizes. So we have 20 to 40 people. It's not, it's again, not this, not this one-way experience. We have a few people, a few dozen people that get to interact with each other, with me. We get to figure things out together. Really fun experience. So come join me yeah. and my fellow instructors. Love it. All right, so let's jump into our session today. Let's do. And this is all about responsive design. And so we're going to see some, we're going to see several solutions to having our UI respond to different, different screen, screen sizes, sizes, different screen situations, yeah. different yeah. paradigms, right? Yeah. And this, I mean, I almost think this is becoming more and more important with Xamarin. It's always been important, but it's, it's getting extra important. It's pretty much vital right now, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have always had a little bit of different screen sizes with, with you know, different size phones like 6 Pluses or with the yeah. giant Androids. Right. Um, but now, now we see the iPhone X. We've right. got another screen Things size like just from iOS. Yeah, and we, of course, have tablets and always have. Yeah. But, but now Xamarin Forms is genuinely a desktop platform. That's a, it's actually running not just occasionally, on say UWP, but we can also now handle Mac and Linux. So it's every desktop platform is now available to every major desktop platform is now available to you as yeah. a Xamarin Forms developer. You can deploy your Xamarin Forms app to all those desktops as well as all of those mobile devices. Right, and, and that is exactly what you said, is really exciting. We've got a lot of platforms and it does mean a lot of hardware variations. And again, this this is only just a sampling of it, right? We're talking about, you know, mobile devices, tablets, computers, uh, you know, all the wonderful things supported by UWP, you know, HoloLens gaming. So, I mean, we've got C Sharp .NET and now Xamarin Forms on a lot of different form factors. Right. You want things to look good on HoloLens, and you want them to look good on an iPhone X. It may sound incredibly hard. It's actually not. It turns yeah. out that that it's not all that bad. In a lot of cases, it's almost free. In yeah. other cases, there's techniques to handle it, and we're going to show those to you. Absolutely. So um, we're going to kind of constrain the problem here a little bit, and, and I want to think of it in three different ways. So I think the most common, or probably the most obvious one might be, is screen size. Absolutely. Course, scaling from small phones all the way up to, say, 4K TVs, right, obviously a bigger screen, and we've got some things to consider with that. Uh, now, some devices, you know, the screen, the, the screen real estate changes at runtime. So there is the obvious example of taking a phone changing it to landscape. Exactly, and that, that may be something that makes that, that helps us realize that these are different problems, screen size versus orientation, because when we talk about screen size, usually we're talking about maybe detecting that one time, detecting that when you load up. But we also do need to handle runtime changes, runtime situations, and, and that's what we're talking about there. And then finally, he's got idiom here, and idiom goes really beyond just how does it look, because we need to start thinking about things like whether a finger can click it or whether it's too small because it was made for a mouse or whether it's just too big because I have to scroll a mouse all the way around some large screen when really a small button would have done. So we want to attack the problem that we have on each platform. Right. And it's 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 input methods, input techniques, and it's also how the, the users are using the devices. Are they carrying it with one hand? Are they sitting at a desk? 
Exactly. These things so. change and these concerns change so depending hit, on the device. Perfect. Well, let's hit them one at a time. Let's start with screen size. Start with screen size. And so let's jump right into it. And so when we think about scaling, we really kind of think of two different things, right? There's, there's really a couple of options of how we would deal with, say, additional screen real estate. Right. So with your, with your text right there, you're not going to yeah. say, oh, let me just make the font size a lot larger because, well, I've got a much larger screen. That would be kind of silly. We're all pretty sure we know what we want to have happen if there's a larger screen with text. Let's see more of it and have less, less scrolling. All right, and I think this is a good example here. We're, say, going from a phone to a tablet. You've got the larger screen. Let's let me make see use more. of let that. Me, yeah. Let me read more, not just get bigger font. That's yeah. silly. Now, how about if I had like a photo viewing application or maybe a movie, something with videos? Right. It's a different now, story, right? Exactly. Now, I'm probably showing the entire photo already on my smaller device, but it would be nice to scale it up. If I have a movie, I'm not going to, say, crop it just because I go to a smaller device. I'm not going to clip the edges. That would be ridiculous as well. So, obviously, these different types of content have, have different choices. And, you know, the choices probably seem obvious to us as humans, but they're things we need to make sure are handled well right. when we develop these applications. Well said. And so, there's... Some great news here in that Xamarin Forms, a lot of the controls are designed to be responsive. So uh, here we might be using a label to display our text. And labels designed to be responsive both to the amount of screen space available, depending on the layout container, but also to its content. It's responsive to content. It will grow. It will try and take up more space. And it'll, it'll do line wrapping. So again, adding more content. Great right. behavior out of the box. Does what it should do. Yeah. Right. Uh, images can be uh, set up to also grow with the amount of space they have. We can lock aspect ratios, you know, set up, you know, clip, cl uh, uh, clipping rules. And so right. we get a, a, a well-formed image scaling. Fantastic. Now, there might be situations, though, where we want to override this a bit. So even with the text, we might not have more text, but maybe we want to nudge the font so up a little bit. We might just, yeah. Or maybe we don't want a giant image dominating our screen. And so with that, well, we can take more control. And so uh, on our page class, uh, we have a size changed event. And this does, well, probably what you expect it to do. It, it gets raised when the size of your screen or the size of your page changes. And uh, you can see here, we've got a simple example. So we might say, let's constrain or lock in the width of a control. Uh, and again, we can do more complicated scenarios here as well. But what's really powerful is notice at the bottom the width property. So our, our content page has a width and height property that we can read. And right. we can use that too. Make, See how big the screen is and start making decisions. All right, make runtime decisions. And again, for things, you know, uh, we've got screens that might actually be dynamically changing. We're on a desktop environment. This could be really powerful. And then we're changing our yeah. image size based on that. Here, the width request yeah. is changing based on that width of the screen. So we're, we're trying at least to say, hey, Xamarin Forms layout engine, I request to be <laughs> this new width, right? Now, we talked about label, we talked about image, but there's other controls that are responsive, and really the layout containers are designed to be responsive as well. Yeah, and they? this is actually one of the things that, that I'm most excited about, is that, that the layout containers themselves actually kind of help to, to guide the other controls into being responsive. So we're going to actually jump into a demo that's it's really simple and yet allows us to see some of these responsive behaviors at work. And in a way where, honestly, we didn't even kind of try. We, we laid things out the way we lay them out for these simple applications, and they just are responsive. They just do what they should do. All right, and I think it's really, it, it comes down to making good design um, decisions about how you use the available elements I mean, in WA. Quite frankly, part of it comes down to the, the Xamarin Forms team made good design decisions for us. Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this yeah. tip calculator app, and, and what we can see is right now I have, have something that's kind of like a, a landscape mode right here. And now this is UWP, so I actually have continuously variable application sizes, a little lower resolution than I'm used to, so we're going to play with this a little bit. And so we can see that this is kind of like a phone in landscape mode right now, and a good analogy there, absolutely. On a yeah. small phone in landscape mode, things might even be scrunched together even more. One thing I want to point out is when I'm scrunching things together here, do you notice how the white space here is what's collapsing? I, I, I know that might not seem so impressive, but it's what we want, right? It's what we want to have happen to make this look good. It's obvious to us as humans that it looks best with these buttons, these controls down here. Well, again, and, and of course, you could make other design decisions, but this is this is a very pleasing design, and it's a nice use of the space available. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And notice how my slider changes size with 
the whole screen so that it's adapting to the size available. And this, it turns out, is actually an incredibly easy design right here. So I assume you're using the side chain event and you're, you're manually pushing all the controls every time the screen is changed? Nothing of the sort. Yeah. All we've got is our controls laid into a stack layout. A single stack layout drives most of this. Now, there's a, there's a horizontal stack layout that also has bill and entry next to it, but that actually doesn't even come into play. My single vertical stack layout that's on top that lo loads this into my first row and this into my second and then total into my third. Now the interesting thing comes here. This entire area is my fourth row. Now, let me just have, give you a little refresher on a stack layout. So a stack layout basically is a container for other controls that says, all right, I'm going to, when I add children, start with one, the first one on top, and the next one will go below it, and the next one will go below it, and the next one will go below it. And we do see that happening here, but it's a little richer than you might right, just assume. I, I would expect you know, the, the tip percentage label, for example, to be right up below the, like the total. Just like scrunched yeah. up at the top, right. And, and why doesn't the enter amount fill up the entire width then if the slider does? Yeah, exactly. We're able to control that stuff and we're able to make it look good and responsive kind of all at one time. And so the first thing I'm going to focus on is this, this area of screen right here. So again, this whole part is our fourth row. This one knows to be larger. We, it knows that that's the one we want to grow when I make the screen larger and smaller, larger and smaller, because of something called my layout options. So here we see that this one has vertical options, end and expand. So the expand is the real powerful part here, because if I change that to start and expand, tip would be up here. But what expand says is after laying out the rest of the screen, there's any space left. So it actually does an initial layout pass without taking any expansion into account. But then it says, all right, how much screen real estate is left? If there's any left, the control that has the and expand property gets all of that space, gets all of that space. And then that end part, determines that it's at the bottom. So vertically, it's vertical options are that it's at the bottom here. Right, and we see similar things for horizontal as well if we're going to do laying out from you know, left to right or horizontally really. Exactly, so let's, let's slide up a little bit and we can see yeah. that, that, that my entry field, while we don't actually see this, it actually has a, its horizontal options are the reason that it's not filling up the entire screen here because it's not set to fill up this entire stack layout area. So the APIs are designed to give us a lot of control over how, how the, the children interact with the layout lay container and take up the space available. Exactly, we have a lot of different ways we can control what's going on here so that things look great as we shrink and grow, shrink and grow. And stack layout is just one of our options. And, and so what we will see, of course, is if I choose a different option, things will look a little bit different. And that's because I might actually want my app to look different. And so if I chose to have, for instance, some of this other stuff be aligned, I wanted my entry field and my tip output amount and my total output amount to all be aligned, I might choose a grid instead of several horizontal stack layouts as my, as my children right here. So, Let's have a Let's look. Let's see that option. And what I love about this here is, is it's responsive design, and it's, but it's responsive design cross-platform. Of course, we're seeing this on UWP, but this does work, of course, on Android and iOS, and, and now our, our future uh, Xamarin Forms platforms as well. And for you to make a cross-platform application and define the type of responsive UI would mean learning all of these UI technologies, all these UI APIs, where with Xamarin Forms, it's taken care of for you and with some simple properties, simple API surface. Yeah, and there's a little to learn in terms of your, your stack options or your vertical options and your horizontal options. There is some to learn. However, you're learning it once and it's applying to everything. Absolutely, versus having to say learn three, four, five platforms exactly. now. Exactly, you have to you know, yeah. learn, learn layouts in Android and learn, and learn constraints in iOS and, and, and all the different platforms. And, and funny, some of these simple things that work very well, and I think you know, a lot of us are coming from the Windows world, we're like, oh yeah, I could do this in UWP. Some of the other platforms, this type of, of behavior can be challenging to implement. Absolutely, and of course, we modeled this largely off of some of the UWP stuff, and so it does seem familiar to you, but you, you, some of you may not realize <laughs> how difficult it can be in some yeah. of the platforms. <laughs>
But yes, this is actually a nice system, and and so those of you who come from a who come from a XAML background are already pretty lucky. So we can see I have in here a grid that's going to do something very similar, and I'll, I'll once again give this a run. And we'll just take a look at, at how it's ever so slightly different. Do do do. Excellent. I do love the quick deployment Got, of yep. UWP. And, and again, if we could be running this on other platforms, but UWP gives the, the advantage of being able to rescale our window and yeah. really show off the responsiveness. Exactly, exactly. Right here, just like the other desktop platforms like Linux and Mac, of course, when we're running desktop, we have a window, we can resize, we can show that it's completely responsive. Whereas if I ran it on a mobile, I'd just be this way or this, you know, just be landscape or, uh, or portrait mode, which is not as exciting. So here I have a myriad of options. So I can move this around. And now we see that all of these buttons are actually changing size with the screen as well. So they're all adaptive. My enter amount actually is now adaptive with the screen. And it's aligned along with the outputs here. Now, now of course, though, if I wanted that entry control left aligned and not taking up the full width of its column, Again, we use our layout options. Right, absolutely no problem. We have things in our grid like call span. And we can tell this does have a bit of a grid layout to it. Um, and in this case, it may be a bit obvious because we didn't use many columns or rows, but we have column span and row span, so we can make it pretty abstract. You can make it to the point where you're not really aware that you're seeing any kind of a, a checkerboard pattern or anything like that. The grid is really powerful that way, and yet still gives us all this responsive help in order to see it look great on all of the different platforms and all of the different screen sizes and real estates available. Fantastic. All right, so I think we've got some other cool ways to handle responsive design. Excellent, let's head back to the slides. And so the next topic we're gonna to cover is, is orientation. And uh, of course, this really just means the, the way the device is being positioned and typically refers to you know, handheld devices. Although we have seen this type of behavior on, on desktop monitors Sure, you well. can even have desktop monitors that sometimes people will put in portrait mode, but you're right, a handheld yeah. device. Of, uh, and yeah, absolutely. And so with these, we see a lot of runtime changes and, and, and we'll see, you know, really a, a big change in vertical height or horizontal height available to the application. Um, but at the same time, there are constrained quantities or known quantities. We know it's either gonna be in portrait or in landscape. Now again, Xamarin Forms, we saw it handles the default behaviors pretty solid. It is, and yeah. we see an example of something like that right on right. your screen. Yeah, and something here where maybe I have a label up top, an image, and, and then a, a label with more content. And we go to landscape, well, we see it's pretty good, but we've actually lost a little bit of our text. You know, we're down to just three lines. And yeah, so I think, exactly. And depending on the, the shape of the screen, we could be losing more content, or if the image had been scaling up even more, our, our text content might just flow off the bottom. Now, this might be great out of the box, but you might want to have more control over it. And, and for something like this, we might choose to reduce the size of the image, use a couple of columns, and, and, and you know, display more text on the right-hand side. And there's still some white space on this screen, so yeah. it may not be obvious, but we actually did get back a lot of our text. Yeah. So you're actually seeing a lot more text on screen than you were in the other version of that. Yeah, absolutely. And so this really comes down to the design decisions that you're going to make as an application developer and as a UI developer. Uh, but and these are things that we can we can decide uh, for our application, for our users, and for our specific you know purpose of the app. Um, but we have control over this, and we can we can we can help dictate how Xamarin Forms responds to orientation change. And the great news is we go back to that size change event notification, and we can very easily detect the orientation by subscribing to the size change event by checking those width and height properties. And you can see here, for example, uh, we're just checking, you know, is it a portrait, is the height greater than the width, and then we're changing the content of an image based on the orientation. And so this is a runtime check, and it's actually fairly simple here. He's saying I've got two major choices, I, two, two major patterns that I want to use, so let me just see which one is appropriate. So it doesn't have to be all a lot of complex measurements or anything like that. Very simple, if we have more width yeah. than we do height, do X. If it's the other way around, do Y. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's not just about changing content, we can actually interact with our layout uh, controls as well. With our layout panels, we can, we can dictate how Xamarin Forms is gonna lay things out based on runtime decisions. And so Excellent. Let's, let's jump over to demo and have a look at this. So I'm gonna run, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly simple application, and let me show you the, the UI first, then we'll fire it up on Android. Mm -hmm. And so here we see, 
Now we have a stack layout with a number of controls, and actually this is uh, similar to something we saw in an earlier session. Uh, this is a little, this is a text to speech application, yes. and we can put in a message and click a button, and Super then have fun. it speak. And it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun, and uh, and again, it's it's a it's a simple application, but it's it's a great way of demonstrating this. So some uh, simple properties that have a lot of power. Yeah. So let's fire the change it over to Android. Let's set this as our starter project. And we're going to run this. So I've just got to deploy the Android emulator, so it'll take a moment just to pop up. But currently we've got a stack layout, and although we haven't explicitly set it, the stack layout is going to, it's going to lay out our controls vertically, right? So our label is at the top, and followed by our entry, followed by our button, followed by our image. Right. So that sounds great, and it sounds great for, well, a portrait it's, orientation. Yeah, it's a decent default. Yeah. But maybe we can do better if we're in landscape yeah. mode. And of course, <laughs> In Xamarin Forms, we can do things like constraint orientation. So we, we have the ability to use the you know the the features exposed by the by the vendor. So it is right. possible to lock to an orientation, but that's not typically what users expect. And so right. uh, that may be appropriate for some applications. Yeah, if, I, if I turn my phone to the side, I expect right. it to do something to adapt right. in some way. Yeah, some, you know, we simply make a little frowny face when we don't see it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, Why isn't this rotating? So. This app. Oh. <laughs> And so here we go, pretty great, uh, pretty basic UI. And if I rotate to landscape, uh, it, it constrains okay. We see our, our image is getting bumped off a little bit, and it, and it feels like we're, we've got a lot of white space around the image. You should show feels, them what it does. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll show this off as well. So bear with me as I, oh, I can, I can touch the screen. Let's do it that way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jason was waiting for you to figure that out. I, I wish I was that smart. <laughs> So uh, apparently we can't hear this, but you should be able to hear this. So and Android loves responsive mm -hmm. UI. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. So okay. again, we see we see some re responsiveness here. Oh, did I not? I don't think you actually hit speak. Ah, you just perfect. hit done on the keyboard. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So we, we see again what Jason showed earlier: our label, our entry, our button. They're scaling to the width, which is which is nice. Although we don't necessarily need a full size button across our screen. And so we can take a little bit of control here. And not having any of the icon, or the icon right. does no longer look like a person speaking, it now looks like some right. abstract art. We're losing a little bit of UI. And so I'm just gonna show you something we can do that's it's a fairly straightforward technique. I'm just gonna add a second stack layout. And I'm just gonna encapsulate everything except the image in this second stack layout. And then I'm just gonna move the spacing. Oh, I'm gonna add it here to the second stack layout. And then what I want to do is give a name to our first stack layout, and this is going to allow me to refer reach. to it in code. Yeah, exactly. I can access from the code behind. So let's give it a name. By giving it a name, it's basically generating a variable for him of that same name, which means now he can access that object instance. The XAML is creating an object instance of stack layout, and it's giving it the name, the variable name, main stack there. Perfect. Great. So now I can reach it in code behind. That's exactly. And let's jump into our code behind in our shared code, right? This is our Xamarin Forms code. So what you're doing, everything you're doing here, is appropriate, is, or is applicable, rather, to yeah. both Android, iOS, and, and really even UWP and Mac, et cetera. Absolutely. Everything you're doing is, is going to work everywhere. This responsive code is Absolutely, not right. at it's all 100%. specific. Right. So I'm over into my code behind and I find our size change event. There it is. Let's just uh, create a method. Adrian hates underscores. <laughs> I, I prefer I prefer no underscores. I'm underscoreless names. code. <laughs> so now I'm going to use exactly what we saw on the slide. I'm going to use that width and height property. So I'll go if the width is greater than this dot height. Right. Okay, well now we're in, that means our width is greater, we're in a landscape orientation. Right, we gotta, we gotta do something different, so we're yeah. just gonna make everything smaller? So let's, let's, let's change a property on our stack layout. Now our stack layout, I didn't have this explicitly, let's put it in. The orientation is horizontal. Vertical. Vert I was going to say, hold on. <laughs> You're like, hold on. If you didn't it's, have it explicitly, yeah. then it's vertical. It's vertical sir. by default. <laughs> I was jumping ahead. And so that means it goes again top to bottom. Right. So let's switch the orientation if we're in landscape. Excellent. And stack orientation dot horizontal. Ooh, tricky. You sneaky, sneaky man. <laughs> and back to vertical, of course, if we're not. Excellent. And just as simple as that, 
Now, this is a technique. This is not the only technique. But what's powerful here is that we can, again, we're making runtime changes. And this is a decision that I've made for my UI. Just kind of straighten up our, our emulator here. I think it might be upside down. <laughs> you got it upside down. All right. So that actually is the landscape presentation. Yeah, bear with you. Sometimes, something is behind. So let's go, go to our, our portrait. There we go. There's I'm going to rotate to, to landscape. And we see here, we've now changed our orientation. It's actually so elegant, you almost don't know, notice that, that he kind of changed how it's laid out because all of the controls are now still exactly where I expect them to be. I expected the, the entry field and the button to contain that area of real estate and be about that width because that's what they were in vertical. And I expect then the other boring part of my, my, my screen to be filled with that icon. And, and when he flipped, go ahead and flip us again. It just, absolutely it's not necessarily even immediately noticeable that That's something cool. about it is changing. Obviously it has, <laughs> obviously it's there when you know to look, but it's, it doesn't necessarily immediately jump out at you. Oh, he relayed it out. It's like, no, it just, oh, it looks good. Oh, it works. Well, and I think part of, part of this here is that we've encapsulated a chunk of our UI. So we've, we've encapsulated our label and our entry and our button in a stack layout. And so their orientation to each other hasn't changed, right? Those three still stay in their, their individual stack. And then we move, you know, in this case, we're moving the image around. Right. So it's, it's a bit of an encapsulation in using these sort of chunks of UI. And I think that concept might come in appropriate or, or uh, come in handy again a little later. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And so we've done it in a simple way, but there's actually, there's, there's other ways of encapsulating UI in Xamarin Forms to really take this further. Excellent. Maybe we should talk about that. I think we absolutely <laughs> should. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's head back to our slides. Uh, I can tell we have a lot of fun with this. Um, and, and this is something that I find it comes up a lot. You know, it's part of XAMU. We interact with a lot of Xamarin developers, and we know that responsive UI is a challenge. And not as much that people don't know how to do it, but they don't know best the practices. They don't know the practices. You know, where, what techniques should you use? Okay, we have a lot of options. That's very typical in programming. And, and one of the reasons people choose Xamarin and, and Xamarin Forms is because they want to run on a lot of devices. That's the whole reason that they said, you know what, this is the best platform for us. So, so it's one of the first questions they ask is, hey, how can I efficiently make it look good on all of these devices that I want it to run on? Yeah. And absolutely, and so actually, that's a perfect segue because we're going to show a couple of other techniques here and there, and it's their ways of being efficient. Because what we just saw was really powerful, but we probably don't want to make a lot of property changes. We don't want to be do relayouts yeah. that can, of course, be expensive. Say we had you know twenty or thirty controls. Well, when we say moving things around at a grid constantly, it could be expensive, right? Absolutely. Exactly. It's, it's their layout passes, and that's it's going to, could be promise hit if we're doing a lot of real heavy lifting. So let's see. So let's talk about another technique and then uh, and some other problems we might want to solve. Yeah, it's particular. We're now going to look at how things change just from device to device. And, and especially, we talked earlier about how when we go from different devices, we're not just any longer worried about the look. We now have other challenges as well. We have mouse, we right. have other input types. Maybe we do have a keyboard or maybe we don't as we saw with your, uh, with right. your emulator. <laughs> we need to determine that. We need to make yeah. things friendly for what peripherals might exist, what screen real estate exists, what pointer devices are available, all yeah. that stuff. And, and I think even, even beyond that is even thinking about the platform they're running on. You know, uh, what are users expecting for that platform? But all of those things are 100% absolutely true. And so we have a simple example here where we've got something running on a desktop and it looks like some sort of editor application. Uh, and, you know, we've all seen things like this before. And we might imagine for on a desktop, well, hey, we're going to sit down. We've exactly said we've got our mouse and our keyboard. You know, we might do a lot of editing on this, uh, you know, in that situation. We've got a mouse. We've got fine-tuned control. We can hit very small button targets, you know, click targets. Whereas if I'm on a mobile device, hey, I probably got it in one hand. I want to use my finger. I might be. I might want a simplified UI. Just, yeah, want, yeah, might even just not even want to want to use your finger from your other hand. Might even just want to use that one hand that's holding it and use that thumb to right. just accomplish the entire goal. Absolutely, and, and sometimes that means a reduced UI. We might have a, a reduced feature set depending on the idiom, or we might just have a different UI layout, a different set of controls that makes sense for that platform. And so. Xamarin Forms fortunately has this concept of idiom, and that allows us to make runtime checks to see what idiom, what type of device we're running on. And uh, let's look at some code, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we see here we have a static device class, and on the device class we have uh, enumeration, a type uh, property, is an idiom. And in Xamarin Forms we have three idioms defined. We have desktop, we've got tablet, and we've got phone. 
And so with this property, we can check at runtime and we can make runtime UI decisions based on the idiom. And what's powerful here is we're not saying, am I on Windows? Am I on iOS? No, we're going, what type of device? And we're also not even necessarily just looking at screen size. The implications are here that if you have desktop, I assume you yeah. also have a more accurate pointer than just your finger. So I can you know, use smaller touch areas or t smaller click areas, things like that. So we, have, we can make a little bit more educated guesses about what setup you have because it's not just about screen real estate here. Absolutely. And so we see in our code, well, we're going we're gonna to present a different UI based on the idiom and say so we're, we're within a page and we're assigning the content property and we're going to present a different view. Right. Have a, a, we've got a desktop view and then a default view, for example. That's probably our mobile-friendly view for phone and tablet. Right. So this looks great, and in this case, we're probably changing the entire UI for our page. And we don't want to go through and change bit by bit by bit, variable by variable, and keep re-rendering the call stack, though. Right, exactly. Or re-rendering the view stack. Right, we're not changing four, five, ten different controls. We want to do this as a chunk. Right. And uh, we have this concept on other platforms, and we have this concept here in Xamarin Forms uh, with the concept of a composite control. So in other words, I can define some abstraction that says, this whole thing, this, this thing that contains five buttons, that contains an entry field, that's all organized by a grid, all of this can be packaged up as a, as a reusable and assignable bit. Absolutely. And you, you can imagine here that we might design a different one for mobile versus desktop and then assign the appropriate one again based on the idiom. Perfect. And you know, if you're a Windows developer, you've seen this, this concept before. And, and really powerful, really excited we have it in Xamarin Forms. And in Xamarin Forms, we use what we call uh, a content view. And so this is, it's, it's like a user control and it allows us to, but it's a, comp, uh, a composite control and we can embed other controls within it and, and encapsulate a bigger chunk of UI just like we saw on the previous slide. And this is a great example here. Uh, we've got a content view, we've got a stack layout. So we put a layout within our content view. And so the content view here is my root node. And so I'm talking about creating a content view, not something inside of a content page like maybe I'm used right. to doing. My content view is my, my root node, my, my base class for this file, this yeah. XAML file. Absolutely. And I, I, I think of these as, you know, as partial pages. You know, it, it's so, Perfect. And we're defining this here, but we're not necessarily, you know, we'll have to still take another step to put it in our UI somewhere. But we're defining a chunk of UI that wraps you know, other smaller pieces, other elements. And it's very powerful because, of course, we can, we can reuse it in multiple places. So if we have some similar UI that works on multiple pages, we could use the same content view. And again, as we saw, runtime decisions. We can swap in content views based on the device behavior or the device, uh, the device idiom. Great. And, and so these controls here, these buttons and entry fields and stuff, they, they may interact with each other. They may have behaviors. Can we handle that the same way that we handle it with a page XAML? Absolutely. So, of course, we know with our content pages, we have our, our XAML and then we have our code behind. Code behind, right. So the exact same thing with our content view, we also have code behind. And uh, so, again, you see it's a partial class. It feels very much like a content page. And so it's a partial, but now it's deriving from content view. Yeah. Instead of from content page. And so it once again uses the XAML and all the code that you put here, and it's going to create one consolidated class that presumably you're going to use inside a page somewhere. Absolutely, exactly. We'll, we'll ultimately eventually display it in a page. Uh, but this is really powerful. Again, it's, it's, it's a great way of architecting your application. It's a great way of segmenting UI. And it's a great way of using partial UI. Amazing. And so let's look at, at an example of this. Please show me. Excellent. And just uh, I see a, a question here. So for a game, you plan to lock the orientation to landscape and then display a message the user only uh, does rotate the portrait. The application only runs in landscape. Hmm. So I think to lock the orientation that will be uh, per platform, I believe. Yeah, you're, you're definitely talking about some difficulty because if, if you lock it to landscape, and that is per platform, if you lock it to landscape, you're also going to lose out on the notifications that it rotated using the high-level UI interfaces, the high-level UI APIs. Um, so you're definitely talking about, about hitting some low-level stuff. Then if you're writing a game, you might be doing that anyway, writing very low-level UI, in 
which case you're ignoring a lot of yeah. the a lot of the the, the layout stuff and, and and whatnot that we're talking about today. But it's, that's all going to be platform specific anyway. Um, so so that wouldn't really be a Xamarin Forms discussion. Um, yeah, to get I, deeper on this, I think we'd have to take it offline. You know, feel free to look us up at at, at university.xamarin.com. <laughs> that's where we're yeah. reachable. Um, and we can definitely go deeper on that. Yeah, but my gut on this, though, I think, is you probably lock it per platform, and then, as Athlete said, we wouldn't get notified. But I will say this is actually a good a good case where um, you know game development, you know, users are often very happy to have you know the device locked to certain orientation. No productivity applications, we like to turn it. Games, we understand. You know, a driving game, for example. Yeah, you might get excited. You might yeah. get excited and actually move your phone around. Yeah. I don't want you to change right. we, the view yeah. on my screen just because I started doing yeah. this in the driving game. So yeah, that's yeah. that's a great point. Yeah. So, but I think it's totally valid to to lock it in for, it, for games. It is. Absolutely. And again, this goes back to us making the right decisions for our application. Exactly. So let's uh, let's see an application here. Uh, should we start on UWP or Android? Let's see UWP first. So let's get this deployed. And so this is a, a drawing application. I think we saw this uh, in an earlier session, in another session. But um, this is a cross-platform drawing application, and it's in, built in with Xamarin Forms. And it's a multi-touch drawing app, and we can of course use the mouse, use our fingers, draw on the screen. And, I, love, and, I love this app. And and <laughs> un unleash our artistic potential. Let's see your artistic potential. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and so here we're running on 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 a, on a laptop. Right. And so presumably we're going to have a keyboard and mouse. And so we've noticed we've got some smaller controls here that I'm using with the mouse. And these and, would be awfully hard to hit if he was trying to hit just the right one with his finger. Yeah. I mean, I mean they're, they're at a place we've got a touch screen. So you know, we're, we're into mixing metaphors here. But yeah, <laughs> again, it's it's. It's a bit easier here to control these with a the mouse, and presumably for this type of content creation application running on a laptop or a desktop, we're probably going to have a mouse. Uh, but again, this this leads into some interesting you can still questions. Still do your drawing with so, your finger. Though, so with okay. the finger, and again, you know, the surface has a pen. Uh, with and again, a pen is it's like a stylus, another extension of having very fine grain control. Exactly. So exactly, and, and that's going to be a, the desktop yeah. idiom. Even though it's a laptop, it would be yeah. the desktop idiom. Absolutely. So it's a Zamagon, that's our that's the Xamarin uh, little yeah. Xamarin logo there. And about the extent of my artistic abilities here. <laughs> uh, but notice here is our application as we expect with Xamarin Forms. We've got a lot of responsive UI out of the box here and pretty great. Yeah, looks um, good. And it's working very nicely and we see our boxes get a bit smaller as as we bring the window a bit smaller. Now however, running this with this style of UI on a phone might be less ideal. We're getting very small touch targets. Again, we think about scaling this down onto you know a three and a half inch, four inch display. These buttons are getting pretty small. They're going to be hard to hit. You're probably going to frustrate your users, uh, and and also you're probably going to violate the design guidelines put out by the by the platform vendors. Right. Uh, you know, I know both Android and iOS and, and Windows as well. The, all uh, all the vendors create guidelines and how we should create touch UI. And yes, a lot of it's yes. leaving space it around it. It reflects upon those vendors, yeah. right? It does reflect upon I, uh, Apple and, and and Microsoft when apps that run on their platform don't look great. So they put out guidelines. And in yeah. some cases, they're pretty darn opinionated on whether your app <laughs> is allowed to get through if you don't follow those guidelines, because it reflects on them. They want every experience on their platforms to be, you know, exceptional experience. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely remember times where there's been UI guidelines. If you violate them too far out, they wouldn't allow your app even on the App Store. So. Exactly. Right, so here we see the application running on, on a phone. Same and, app. And the very same app, uh, but notice we've changed the UI. We've simplified our color selection. And again, this is a, de a decision that we made as the developers. Uh, and you might choose to do a different type of control or maybe have another, another interaction paradigm to get to the other colors. But you know, we thought, hey, this is a phone. It's probably going to use one hand. Simplified UI style. Easy got nice to touch. big touch targets. But I've got similar functionality. Still my drawing apps, my content creation, still in Xamarin Forms. But we've made a runtime decision based on the idiom. We're running on a phone here. So how do we do that? Well, as you probably guessed, we've used content views for this. So I'm going to do my shared code. I'm going to open up views. And let's start with the, uh, with the color picker touch view. So our controller is called a color picker. And you can see we have some XAML. In this case, we've got a stack layout. And then in our code behind, we've got a little bit of logic, and this is just populating the stack layout with those, those are the color boxes, the color selector controls. Uh, that's actually a little separate view. And I'll show this quickly as well. So uh, our color selector view, why not? <laughs> uh, just quickly here, it's just um, 
Uh, it's actually driving from a box view, and we're just uh, attaching a tap gesture recognizer on it. So we're making a little color colored button, and then we're using this to populate uh, our stack layout on our touch UI. Now, we do something similar for, for desktop. We have one that's called color picker mouse view, and notice we're using a different control. So we're using a grid to lay out our controls this time instead of uh, our stack layout. And then again, we'll see some logic in here. And, and again, I mean, this really just comes down to plain old C Sharp. I'm, I'm moving quickly on this because we're just instantiating controls. We're adding it to the grid as children. And it's just C Sharp. It's .NET. There's, there's nothing complicated right. here about I, how I'm I, know, I noticed they do, uh, hmm. they do, do we do have a base class on, on so that? So absolutely. So of course, we've got two different content views. Doing that are largely the same thing. They're very similar. And so uh, and for this one, we decided to use a, a color picker base class. Now notice. This class here derives from content view. And then we can put all of our common logic, so things like you know, presenting um, our color change event, uh, you know, responding to the button taps, you know, getting the color, uh, the color buttons. We're doing some, some programmatic uh, control generations. We're generating those color buttons at runtime. So we'll put that logic in here. So right, again, perfect. so sharing that code across these. And then all we need to do is uh, in our content views, and so instead of driving from content view, we derive from our base class, from color picker, Excellent. which is now deriving from content view. So which means we can have XAML and all that good stuff still applies. Yeah, absolutely. And then to so to apply this at runtime, I'm just going to head on over to my main page. And so this is a single screen application, and this is a Xamarin Forms page. And if you look in our constructor, We've got a add color picker method. And in add color picker, notice here is our device idiom. And we're checking the target idiom. This is enumeration and this will type desktop. Outstanding. And I'll just show you quickly here so I can show you the other options. There is desktop, phone, and tablet currently. And so when it's on desktop, we're instantiating the color picker mouse view. Again, that's our desktop UI. Mousey one, picker. right? Our mousey <laughs> one, exactly. Excellent. Uh, otherwise, we're doing our, our kind of our mobile friendly, our color picker touch view, right? Again, just nodding Less to Less options, our... but big and easily touchable. Exactly. And again, these are design decisions that we made. You could make other decisions, but this is how you're able to make the runtime changes, how to update your UI. Perfect. And again, we have the benefit here with that base class. We have a we have a, a field of type color picker, and then we just assign that. And we Handles instantiate it. So, so that our event can be handled yeah. commonly, and some of the other properties can be handled <laughs> commonly. Great. Exactly. It, it helps commonize the code, but of course, there's no reason why you couldn't just instantiate a color picker view, mouse view, and then do, um, do the additional logic of, say, adding it to your grid right yeah. there as well. Great. So again, the abstraction helps clip the code, helps reduce uh, code duplication. Uh, but again, this is just getting to C Sharp. This awesome. Is, this right, is stuff exactly. that we do as developers all the time. Just plain old C Sharp. Just plain old C Sharp. Uh, how many have time here? Should we wrap things up or do you want to do one more demo? Oh boy. Uh, can you make it a fast one? We are pretty low on time. <laughs> yeah, I'll make it quick. I, all right. I, I won't run Sounds it on the good. platform. So, what I want to show you, so we have, of course, again, we're showing you tools to add to your toolbox. Uh, and uh, I've got another application here, and this does something similar, but instead of using content views, we're actually changing the page class. And so, we're, we're creating, you know, if we have substantial UI changes, Maybe it's not worth encapsulating those those content views. We'll go, hey, you know what? Make a brand new page. It's an page. entirely different page. It doesn't because yeah. it doesn't really share anything in common. So what would yeah. be the point of of just using some abstraction? Exactly. And so uh, I'll show you here as well. So uh, I'm jumping right into it. Um, this is actually using a, a master detail page, and you can see here that uh, that's not the one I want. Let's go. So that drawer kind of user oh, I'm experience. I'm in the wrong project. Here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't look quite right. Uh, and so we're talking about that drawer kind of user experience when you say master detail. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, let me jump into that. I want. So you told me to be quick, and now you put the pressure right, on me. Right, I did. I put and pressure now I'm slowing on you and see what happened. So, but, yeah. but what, what I imagine yeah. is that, that while we go through that master detail, that drawer, when, yeah. we, when we're opening a drawer, when we're selecting an item in that drawer, it might be a different item yes. depending on what platform we're running on. It says the same item. It's under the same, same option, same, same listing in the list view. But we're going to see something different based on some different page based on whether we're running in mobile or running on desktop. Absolutely. So let me just uh, get this up here. So I'm going to my shared code. This is where our, our Xamarin Forms UI definition is, and my pages here. I won't go through all the details of master detail, but um, again, as Zethley said, when we make a selection, we load our detail page. Um, we'll jump to our code behind here. 
Actually, it's in the master detail. There it is. So when we select one of our child, when our, our, our items are master detail, uh, we get a, uh, a notification from the list view. And this is where we're, our job is to present the detail UI. And so here again, it's the exact same idea. I'm going to check the device idiom, but then I'm going to actually present, I'm going to navigate to a different page. And what's interesting about this is not that we're doing using pages out of content views, but there's other ways of making sure we're not duplicating too much code. Now, this project is using uh, an MVVM pattern for, for most of its pages. And what's powerful here is that I've got two different pages two different UIs, and, and again, I think for the uh, sake of time, I'll, I won't go through all the, the UI, but right, again... but we're just, we're abstracting yeah. away that. We're, we're saying they re both represent the same concept in yeah. this application, yeah. so they can sit, live under that same menu item, and we'll yeah. just show the one that's appropriate for, for the device. your idiom. But again, they're powered by the exact same view model, and so we, yeah. again, we're sharing all that code, and this is exactly why MVVM is amazing, because we define our UI and we define our view model, and we can make UI changes and still consume the same view model. So again, we're just reducing code duplication. Uh, I think we'll jump back to slides because yeah, of time. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to quickly answer yeah. Jeff's question. So Jeff wants to know if, if the idea of the, the, co the content view that we're talking about maybe conflicts with this, this new concept we talked about in our last .NET Conf session uh, where we can address fragments when running an Android. And the answer is absolutely not. Fragments is just a way for us to leverage Android platform-specific code. That was leveraging platform-specific code when on Android. But this, what we looked at today, content views and encapsulating things that way, that runs on any platform. Everything he just showed will run perfectly on Android or on iOS or on Mac or on Linux, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> All right. So I see you have our bye-bye uh, our slide. So, uh, Absolutely, yeah. So uh, to the end here, so it's getting source code. There's lots of it, especially if you want to dissect that last presentation. Uh, it's all there, uh, as well as all the other projects we looked at today. Yeah, and if you want to know lots and lots more about all sorts of mobile development topics, of course, the place to go, university.xamarin.com. You can reach us there. We are yeah. always super happy to have conversations about all sorts of mobile stuff. Well, absolutely, and especially the presentation, the demo you did earlier uh, talking about um, uh, the layout options. We've got a really fantastic class, really dedicated to that concept right. and really know, learning the ins and outs so if I, you want to master those topics. I spent five minutes. The class is two hours. Yeah. So we have a lot of material. <laughs> we go through it live. You get to ask questions because we're in that same meeting together. You guys get to talk to me. So we get to really figure it out and dig in together. And that just like every other class that we do. Plus all of the free content that we have, the self-guided learning that we have. So please check out university.xamarin.com. And also check out the rest of our .NET Conf sessions today. <laughs> we'll be back soon to talk to you guys more. Thank you very much. Bye for now.